She's got new legs, Lieutenant Dan. That's the angle that I want to sit at. Well, I've got to put the tail wheel on and that'll drop that down a little bit, but it just won't fit in the shed like that. Even the center section, I've got to take it off at the moment. But uh, yeah, that's it. Big thing, isn't it? I think I need to put a step for the rear cockpit. Hmm. Good evening boys and girls, hoping everyone is safe and well everywhere, uh, all locked down in your basements by the, by the sound of it. We haven't quite had that here yet, but it'll happen. So um, yeah, plenty of time to work on the plane obviously, but um, yeah, sort of having to make do with what we've got because we can't really go anywhere and most of the places are shut anyway. So anyway, a little bit of progress. I'll come and show you. So now that I've got the cockpit sitting or the aircraft sitting the, at the height that I want, that's almost shoulder height for me to get into the cockpit there. So obviously we need a step or a way of getting in. So I've made a little bracket, 100 thou thick, that should do it. So um, there's one on the other side as well. So I'll have a little step or something attached to that and it'll go forward to pick up somewhere on the rear uncarriage mount when I make it. That'll be the way in into the cockpit at the back. Front will be different because it'll have a step ladder arrangement in built into the undercarriage. But yeah, that's how we do that. So rearrange the shed, put the wings out here to work on them and sort of put the park the fuselage away for a bit. So we get access to the Leading edge slats, so I can work down that side and then squeeze it across and work down that side. So we'll build them directly off the wing. Um, the trick that I have is to form the skins, like this one here. Now it's a bit of a challenge because I don't have a roller and I don't have a folder. So I either have to wait until I do, which could be who knows how long at the current times, or I fold them by hand or roll them up. So that's what I did here. It's not the best at all, um, but it'll have to do for now. Um, even, I don't know, I'll probably keep persisting with this sort of stuff and I'll end up rebuilding them down the track sometime when I have access to decent stuff. So now at the moment, it'll do. Um, I'll probably cheat a little bit and make smaller panels. This one's a bit too long to really work properly. I did all right, but we need to, it's not quite up to, up to standard. But it's not bad enough for me to throw out either. So anyway, we'll, we'll persist. And then um, revisit that another time. So, leading edge, got the little cutouts there for, for where the rib, the attachment comes through. And we just got to fix it all together and get it all straight and keep going. So, obviously, this is only half the length. It's actually under half, so there'll be a few more pieces that'll add on to that and then rivet it on as one piece. I'm actually thinking about making two pieces. But anyway, I'm, yeah, Julie's still out there. That's what we're up to. Come here. So I've got to make a skin that goes around here. And I don't have a roller or a folder or anything. So um, we'll see what we can do. So here's my center line here on the sheet. Get my favorite piece of timber that I found. Just work it down a little bit.
now. So that's the, the top side, let's go work on the bottom now. far off, a little bit more mucking around and we've got it. I think we can work with that. So you're building away and we still got to find the little holes in down here. See, I've created holes here. So how do we get that here? See, I've little mark an X there, but I'm only guessing really. And same with here. There'll be another hole there somewhere and all there. So there's calculations you can do. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, another option is a hole finder. So that's this thing. So homemade jobby. You can actually buy them, I think. So it's just a focus. There we go. Just a rivet there. I've shaved down and tapered the tail. So it's only just hanging in there and obviously a hole through there. So that gives me a mark. So the trick is you slide that in there. Oh, there's a hole there. You squeeze it all up, and that, boys and girls, is where the hole's gonna be. So we'll, we'll mark that proper, and I'll do that to the other ones, and we'll drill it off. Okay, so we've uh, marked our holes there, and that's the other one there. Now, the fun part of just drilling it and making it fit. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see, we'll do this one. We'll focus, focus. Ha! See? I know boats. There we go. Drilled off. Clear code. So now, now I can mark, I can mark and drill these rivets through here and add a couple more on those verticals there as well. But that's locked it in. Locked it in and got it pretty well straight by the time I finish all that off. And we're good. This one's on the bench ready to go. So um, that's um, two weeks worth of fairly yeah. solid work yeah. on that. A lot more in it than I thought. Anyway, so yeah, 
polishing process now. So what do we do for polishing? Well, these, as you can see, they're pretty, pretty yuck. The, the protective coating on these skins had actually perished a fair bit. That's what this is here. So I've had to scrape it off. And here came off, but there's still lots of residue left over and there's fingerprints and all sorts of nasties in there. So it's gonna take a fair bit to polish. Um, this is the stuff I use. Bowden's Own Metal Polish. It's an automotive Australian made um, stuff. And it's just a polish, it's not a cut. There's no abrasive in it. And I just use polishing pads. Um, I didn't want to cut the metal because um, I just wanted to protect the aluminium coating on the, on the skin as much as I can. So um, the whole, or everything here I've, I've done is um, just with this stuff and polished with polished pads. No abrasive cutting. So we'll see how we go this time. It's just gonna take a few extra going overs, I think. So this is my setup for polishing. So I've got my orbital sander there, rags, lots of, um, the polishing liquid, and the various polishing pads. So I usually start off with this one. These just, I just end up throwing out. Um, and then you start off with this one, lots of rags in between, and then go over a second time, more rags, and then you finish it off with this one. And more rags. And for the real hard spots, I've got, I'm going to where I end up with that polishing thing for the drill. So that's handy as well from time to time. So that's that. Okay, we'll just try polishing just, just this section here. We'll go all the way down, but this here, and you can see the difference between one skin which is fairly nice and clean and this one here where it was still got a fair bit of residue on there so i gave this a bit of a shake up and we'll just pour a little bit on that'll do for now and then i just hit it with this pad here is the i've used this obviously a few times and then we'll clean it up use a, use a cleaner one and then finish it off with the woolen one I'll try and do this too. A bit of a challenge. I'll just go over it. After going over it a few times uh, with the initial pad, you can see these marks here where the residue still is. So I'll hit that with uh, a rag and a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit more of that Bowden stuff, and we'll clean all those little bits up and then we'll keep going. I've just got a little bit of that on a rag and we just go over the spots that need it. I'm not putting much pressure on. Need to do it a bit more so i'll just do the whole section like that that needs it and then we'll hit it with the sander again okay so now that we've gone over the spots with a rag you can see all the black gooey mess that we created basically we'll just keep going and cleaning that off and then it'll be all shiny underneath <laughs> 